What I'm going to present today is how to remotely administer and control a Vocia system. The options you use depend on the features you wish to manage as well as the hardware in the system. The Vocia software allows the system and its devices to be managed via the user interface. Additionally, two Vocia devices have a web management interface, these being the TTS1, the text-to-speech server and the LSI16 life safety interface. The web interface provides reporting and controls specific to each device. All that's required is a standard web browser and a network connection to the device. In the case of the LSI-16, the interface reports the state of the emergency devices within the system. And in the case of the TTS-1, the user has the ability to trigger a pre-recorded audio announcement, as well as the ability to construct a complete message comprising of multiple audio and text elements. A vital part of remotely administering a system is device monitoring and the system health reporting. Vocia uses a colour scheme to indicate the health of devices which immediately lets an operator know if the system requires attention. The system shown here is fully functioning and all devices are available. This is shown by the overall green layout. If there's anything an operator should be aware of, it will be highlighted in yellow and anything critical to the operation of the system in red. Say a device became unresponsive. This would automatically be indicated by the device status changing from green to red and the device being reported as offline. There's four areas where events like this get logged. In the software, on the devices, on the MS1 message server, and email reporting if it's been configured. By using the logging features, the nature of faults can be detected, diagnosed and addressed before the system is found to be in a compromised state. Not only are faults and alarms logged, detailed records of paging events, email notification, device availability, configuration updates and emergency activity are all recorded as well. In regards to managing the system, one of the most common requirements is real-time control of background music and levels. Within the World Properties, Audio and Live Control tab, the current zone shown in the drop-down list displays the available background sources. Sources can be easily selected and levels adjusted too. Other zone-specific settings include the ability to mute the background music. There's also the ability to inhibit paging in a zone, which will disable any low, medium and high priority pages to the zone. However, urgent and emergency pages will still be allowed through due to the elevated priority levels. Allow page inhibit from a WR1 can be used if there's a WR1 wall remote in the system and it's been assigned to the zone. This option adds an additional control page to the WR1, allowing the wall remote to be used to enable or disable the page inhibit function. When mute all is enabled, background music and paging events, other than those configured with urgent or emergency priorities, are muted. Schedule events can be added and edited as required. Events can be enabled or disabled, as well as the entire scheduler if needed, all in real time. The majority of physical devices have live controls as well. A paging station, for example, has a visual indication of the level sensed by the microphone and provides control for adjusting the gain and preamble levels. Other live settings on a paging station include adjustments for the compressor limiter and the ability to add or modify filters on the fly. Other devices offer different signal processing functions. Take a VO4 for example. The VO4 is a 4-channel line level output device and has DSP control to manage ducking, filters, dynamics, crossovers, speaker EQs, delays, output levels and logic control settings. The functions I've touched on so far all reside on the Audio and Live Control tabs. If any settings under these tabs are modified, the changes are live and are heard immediately.